श्री गणेशाय नमः ओम श्री सरस्वत नमः ओम श्री गुरुभ्यो नमः ओम समस्त जन कल्याणे निरत करुणाम नमा चिन्म देव सद्गु ब्रह्म विद्वर ओ मूक कौति वाचाल पंगु लंघयते गिरी यम वंदे परमानंदमाघव सदाशिव सरंभा शंकराचार्य मध्यमा अस्मदाचार्यपर्यता वंदे गुरुपरंपरा ओ भद्रं कर्णे शृणुयाम देवा भद्रं पश्येक्षजत्रा स्थिरंगुवागंसनो व्यशेम देवितयदायु स्वस्ति नो वृद्धश्रवा स्वस्ति न पूषा विश्व स्वस्ति नो हरिष्कने स्वस्ति नो बृहस्पतिर्दा ओ शाति 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 the last section of the mundaka upanishad the worship of the man of realization without desire it was said leads to realization and abidance in the self and therefore giving up of desires was encouraged by saying that one who realizes the self all his desires would leave him here itself and after that it was indicated what is the way of not attaining the self and thereby it was indicated how we can attain the self so etair upayaihi yatate yah the one who puts in effort by these means these means means whatever has been indicated that it is not possible to attain because of that the opposite of that so without proper health and the right spirit it cannot be attained therefore these means will mean that with the right spirit with maintenance of good health and with uh, pramada means attachments towards the worldly objects it cannot be attained so here without attachments it can be attained and without practicing austerities in the right spirit it cannot be attained so practicing austerities it is in the right spirit with the right amount of renunciation that is what will be able to uh, get us to the uh, abidance tasya isha atma vishate brahma dhama here tapas also means we had seen already where tapas also means the pursuit of knowledge jnana mayam tapah so through that vishate brahma dhama it is said that as though the individual self enters and merges into the total self now what does this entry mean so in earlier sections also there was this example of the bow and the arrow and the target and it was said sharavat tanmayo bhavet like the arrow hits the target and as though goes and merges into the target so there is no existence of the arrow separate from that target so these words are used for some indication but it is a limitation of language there is no merging as such happening 
there is nobody is entering into anything else because there are no two entities. It is like the drop enters the ocean. Now we may feel that it is like entry, but it is actually water, water is the same. There is no difference at all. So here also, how does this entry take place? What is this Vishate Brahma Dhamma means what? So that is being indicated in the next verse. <coughs> Verse number 5, mantra number 5. Samprapyainam rushayo jnana tripta ham. Samprapyainam rushayo jnana tripta ham. prashanta ham. Te sarvagam sarvataf prapya Yuktatmanas sarvameva vishantim. Yuktatmanas sarvameva vishantim. So, first of all, who attains this supreme? So, there are so many words and adjectives used to indicate who can gain this supreme abidance in the self. One, Rishayaha. Rishayaha, one meaning of Rishayaha is the seer, the knowledgeable person, the one who in the state of meditation could see all the mantras, the divine formulae. Rishayaha. Rishi also means Gachati means keeping keeping on moving. So the one who is not just stagnant in one place, he keeps moving, means a person who is putting in effort. And through that effort, what has he attained? Jnana Triptaha. Jnana Triptaha. Jnanena Triptaha. The one who has attained fulfillment, satisfaction through jnana, through knowledge. So, knowledge is something that we always want, 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 want. For example, anything I know, I want to know more. And there is this, nowadays it's very famous, this disease called FOMO. Fear of missing out. Now, what are we missing out? The missing out is in the terms of knowledge, information. Oh, I should not miss out something. Um, no, everybody knows and I don't know knowledge. So, this tripti in terms of knowledge is very difficult otherwise. We are all the time curious, curious, curious about the same thing also or about various things. I know this but I don't know that. I want to know that also. I know this much. I want to know more. So, I try. So, this tripti doesn't come at all. How much ever information we may gather. But still, if somebody asks a question, have you know, known about this? Thing? Oh, I don't know at all. Then, immediately I want to get, no, no, how can I know that? So, there is this want of knowledge and this is very natural to us. Why? Because we are Jnana Swarupa. It is like want of happiness. Why do we want happiness? I am not able to experience but I want it because that is my nature. Similarly, knowledge means what? Supreme Consciousness, knowledge per se, not knowledge of but knowledge per se. That knowledge per se I myself am and therefore there is a craving. So, there can never be any satisfaction, there can never be any stopping in this pursuit of knowledge. Here he is saying what is these people? Jnana Triptaha means now they don't want to know anything more. They have known something through which everything is known. This is the question of the Upanishad. Jnana Triptaha. So, who, whoever is the Rishi alone becomes a Jnana Tripta. And they are, who are they? Kritatmanaha. Kritatmanaha. Means they are Krita Atmanaha means as though the word meaning is self made. But self made more than self made. Krita Atmanaha means the, the one who has attained his self. That is called Krita Atmanaha. Also, self made in the transactional world, we can say. You know, Self-made man, like that we say. But here, in the uh, spiritual aspect, we say the one who has attained the self. 
Dhatmanah. Of course, through pursuit of knowledge only, ultimately has attained, abided in the self. Vita Ragaha, there is no attachment whatsoever. Vita Ragaha, completely free from any type of attachment. And when we say Vita Raga means Vita Dvesha also. So, no Raga, no Dvesha. Because these are two sides of the same coin. So, if there is attachment, we should understand either complementing it, there is hatred towards something else or just give it a little time, that same object will become an object of hatred also after attachment. It will keep changing because it is just flipping off a coin. So, Raga, Dvesha go together. Also, when we see other scriptures and all, we understand also our experiences that as, as soon as Raga is there, attachment is there, there is desire also, desire will lead to fear also, fear will lead to greed also, greed will greed or anger also. So, all these things are following. So, so Vita Ragaha means Vita Ragadi Doshaha. All types of negativities like Raga, Raga, Dvesha, etc. All these things. Vita Ragaha, free from all attachments, likes, dislikes, etc. Prashantaha. Prashantaha, they are completely peaceful. Peaceful means it is not the, just the state of mind. Because Prashanta, we say yes, this mind is completely peaceful. So that can happen even, you know, when we do a little bit of pranayama and all and sit steadily and all, after some time the mind becomes peaceful. And that is why when we practice meditation and all, sometimes we, we fall asleep and all these things. This happens because the mind becomes so peaceful and the body also gets the signal that I think it's time to sleep. Because that state of peace is only practiced when I want to sleep. So that's a training issue. But that may happen. But here it is not just the peace of mind that we are talking about. Prashantaha means deeply peaceful that the mind is not going to get agitated again. Because it is completely disconnected from the world of objects. So, Prashantaha, all these uh, senses and all are not going to the objects and disturb in any way the peace. So, the senses, mind, intellect, everything is peaceful, not asleep, peaceful. So, wakeful and peaceful, that is Prashantaha. This and another word is given here is dhiraha. Dhiraha means the people who have clear discrimination. Now, these are all indications of a man of realization. Who is a man of realization? Rishayaha, Jnana Triptaha, Kritatmanaha, Vitaragaha, Prashantaha, Dhiraha. These six words are indicating, uh, and one more, Yuktatmanaha, seven words. Yuktatmanaha, the one yukta integrated yuktatmanah integrated mind and intellect so these are the qualities of a man of realization and when we see a man of realization being described in the scriptures it is automatically understood that it is for me effort to develop these qualities it is my sadhana to develop these qualities. So, I also need to be a Rishi means keep working hard, keep moving. That's why the scriptures say, charai vaiti, charai vaiti. Keep moving, keep moving, don't become stagnant. Don't settle down in a comfort zone, keep moving, Rishi. In harmony with the whole nature, the totality, so that I also am able to get that, my, make myself available for that revelation of knowledge. I also feel satisfied with whatever no, unnecessary curiosity does not trouble me. No, often when we get this, I want to know this, I want to know this, what is this, what is happening, what is there. So, immediately we have to ask ourselves, is it necessary? Can I live without this information? Can I function without this information? Can I fulfill my duties without this information? If the answer is yes, then I don't want that information. 
This is Jnana Tripta in practice level. Because these are all naturally coming to the man of realization. For us, practicing, I need to put in effort to do these things. To gain abidance in the self. So, the sadhanas that have been indicated, Shravanam, Mananam, Nididhyasanam, all these things I consistently, sincerely practice. Vita Ragaha, giving up likes and dislikes, means my decisions are not taken based on likes and dislikes. Decisions are taken based on what is right, what is necessary, what is the, you know, uh, the right thing to do at that time. So, not based on I like this, therefore I will do this. So, this is Vita Ragaha as practice. Prashantaha, valuing the peace of mind more than anything else. This is not with respect to duties, but with respect to again the previous likes and dislikes, based on that, you know, valuing the peace of mind. If I run after likes and dislikes, it is going to disturb my peace of mind. So, is it worth it? The peace of mind is such a great wealth. So, I start from there. So, if I don't want to use or if I don't need to use my senses, I don't. Why unnecessarily? When it is not required, not required. That way, thinking, sometimes overthinking and all this are not required. Sometimes, it, let it be. Over analysis. Sometimes, you know, this uh, Gurudev and Guruji and all, when they say something and all, too much of this Shraddha Bhakti and all is there. And Guruji looked at this side and smiled. And this side, he just looked, did not smile. There must be some message in this. And you are looking right, you smile. Not right, just look, don't smile. Oh, what word of wisdom. He looked at that bottle. Maybe he wants what is there in that bottle. Why so much of interpretation and analysis is not required? He is just casually moving around his head. What does it matter? Unnecessary analysis. <coughs> when he was saying, Oh, that time, first time he said, Oh, that time he sneezed. Second and third time he did not. There is a message in this. That sneezing, it comes when it comes. You can't stop it. But thinking, over analyzing, all this, not required. Prashant. It is okay. So, what is the main thing that I have to get? That's all. Dhiraha. Develop more and more discrimination. And this discrimination naturally is there in us. We have seen this in the beginning of the Upanishad itself. That what is a quality of a student. Pariksha Lokan, Karma Jitan, Brahmanaha, Nirveda Maya, Nastya Krita Kritena. In that initial mantra itself we have seen. But here again in the man of realization it is natural. So, for us we have to develop. So, this discrimination also, what kind of discrimination, how we should, normal discrimination is there. For example, short term, long term discrimination we have. Changing very frequently and changing slowly, that discrimination we have. So, we choose that which changes slowly, that which deteriorates slowly, take long term happiness, short term, these things we can, uh, you know, discriminate. But permanent and ephemeral, are we able to discriminate between these two? Clear cut. Short term, long term, yes. Should I buy this product or this product? This product, 5 years warranty, this was 2 years warranty only. 5 years, I am more intelligent. Okay, it's a little bit money, 5 years warranty, I will take this. This intelligence we have. Well, the intelligence is both of these are impermanent. This body itself is impermanent. The mind is constantly changing. This all is anitya. What is nitya? That my supreme self, Brahman, so consciousness, that is nitya. To be able to differentiate these two, that is the highest viveka. And that viveka for a jnani, it is very normal. But for us, it is effort. Therefore, the raha. So, trying and doing that. Trying and just distinctly understanding, relating to it, to understand that, okay, we are doing this transactional viveka very often. But this is not the ultimate. 
and Yuktatmanaha, integration of mind and intellect, which is you know, stressed upon a lot in the Bhagavad Gita. That having the mind and intellect, the that which we love and that which we value coming together. So this Yuktatmanaha, these are all qualities that we need to develop, which is there naturally in a man of realization. Such a person, what has happened? Samprapya enam, having attained this self, this jnani, what is this? What, what happens? Sarvagam sarvataha prapya sarvam eva avishanti. Sarvataha by all means in all ways, sarvagam that which is pervading everything, prapya having attained, they, those people, sarvam eva avishanti, they enter into all. They enter into all which is all pervading by attaining this self by all means. What do you want to say? I want to say that it is already everywhere and it is everything. So, how can anything enter it? If we say, you know, in the ocean, surface of the ocean, a wave has risen. And this wave, as a wave, is meditating on what? On the ocean. And it is trying to tell itself, this ocean is like the target and I, the wave, am like the bow and Om, I like the, uh, the wave is the arrow and Om is the bow and I have to, with that power of the bow of Om chanting, I have to go and hit the target of the ocean and merge into the ocean. I have to enter the ocean and become one with the ocean. Now if we ask, wave, who are you? I am the wave. But okay, you are the wave, but what are you? Wave. What do you want to merge in? Ocean. Or can you live without the ocean? That is what I can't live, but still see, I am the wave. So that identity which can never be different from that ocean but still considering oneself different from the ocean, from that standpoint there is an expression possible that this wave has entered the ocean, merged into the ocean. That is what is the language used here. Sarvataha, Sarvagam, Prapya Sarvam Eva Avishanti. Having attained that which is all pervading in all possible ways, enters the all. Means, I am already that only. So, what has happened? Just ignorance has gone. That's all. When the wave, as the wave realizes that I am not only this wave, I am the ocean, over. Then there is no entry required separate from that. Because as the wave also, it is the ocean only. If we take that wave in a bucket, I am going to fill this wave in a bucket. Will there be a wave? It will be just water. And same way, take a bucket from the depth of the ocean, it will be same water. Because there is no difference. The temporary few seconds of its existence, if it starts feeling that I am different from the ocean, that is, that is its ignorance. And from that ignorance standpoint, if it says, I will merge back into the ocean, it is a language of ignorance. And an ignorant person has to be taught in the language of ignorance. Therefore, this language is used for us. Otherwise, from the standpoint of knowledge, there is no entry, there is no merging. Because entry, merging, all these are possible only when there are two entities and one goes into the second. There is no two. So, once this 
Rishi, this Jnani attains the self, then there is no merging other than that required because the self itself is heaven. When a drop of water understands that it is water, even when it is in the form of a drop, a tiny droplet, even at that time, it is one with the totality, totality of water. It is also H2O and everything, all drops of water, all reservoirs, all oceans, everything that drop is all that. So, as that shape and that quantity, it may look like it is different, but its essence, it is the same all over the world. So, that which is everywhere, that is the self. So, as soon as I understand, then that, that knowledge itself is entry, that knowledge itself is merging. So, once it has been realized as this, then such a person of wisdom will not see oneself or anything else as limited by any of the instruments. He is not seeing the instrument, he is just seeing the, the self everywhere. <coughs> For example, Shankaracharya ji gives this example of just as a pot, there is space in the pot which is called as pot space. Why is it called pot space? With respect to the pot. Otherwise, it is space only. It was never different from the space outside. But when the pot breaks, then we say the pot space merged with the space. What merging? It was always one only. There was no two space. Now one space cannot merge into the other space. To keep the doors, windows, everything open. Why? We want to move this space out and get a new space from outside, inside. Space is one only. Because there are walls, we feel that this is an internal space which is separate from the other. That separation is because we are looking at the walls. When my attention is on the walls, there is inside space, outside space. When my attention is on space, there is no inside, no outside. So that is, so there is no merging. So such a, a man of knowledge, how are they? And these are all words used in plural. Prishayaha, Jnanatriptaha, Yuktatvanaha, all these are plural words. Plural indicates it is available for all. And many have walked this path and attained. So therefore, telling us we also can walk this path, we also can attain this. And the sixth mantra, continuing this glory of the man of knowledge, it is said, this is a familiar mantra, Vedanta Vijnana Sunishchita Artha Sanyasa Yoga Dhyataya Shuddha Sattva Te Brahma Lokeshu Paranta Kale Paramritaf Parimuchanti Sarve so, in, when we welcome a sannyasi with the Purna Kumbha, the mantra includes this mantra also. So, the idea is we are worshipping that knowledge, that state of realization. So, that is why sannyasa. So, this that is why it is included in that mantra. Who are these? Again, some more adjectives used to indicate that man of realization. Vedanta Vijnana Sunishchita Arthaha. Vedanta, Vedanta Upanishad, the knowledge. 
through this vedanta vijnana vijnana means not just intellectual understanding but experiential understanding so vedanta vijnana through this experience we really understand the meaning artha so this meaning artha is understand understood when the experience of these words of upanishad takes place and it is not just understood sunishchita means it is well determined so the meanings of the upanishadic statements are well understood and determined by their own direct experience such a person is the gnani is the man of knowledge vedanta vijnana sunishchita arthah so they have confirmed they have determined this meaning really understood the import of the upanishad by what by direct experience so for us what is there in that we have to try and experience and not just intellectually try and ascertain its meanings because intellectual understanding is apara vidya direct experience is para vidya yaya tad aksharam adigamyate sanyasa yogat yatayah shuddha sattva sanyasa yogat this a uh, man of knowledge now there is sanyasa means there is karma sanyasa means giving up of all other pursuits and actions just establishing in the self now giving up of actions whenever we hear even arjuna had this doubt that oh so then uh, i should give up action only then i will get knowledge no the point is when we gain knowledge actions will drop off mainly the action by itself it does not need to end because actions are not a problem at all the problem is the doership the karta bhava thus the attitude of agency i am doing this that has to end and that will end with knowledge sanyasa yoga yatayah this yatayah these hard working means the people who have put in lot of effort and done all this sadhana consistently they only have attained this state so for us also it is a an indication that we also need to be consistent in our efforts and through the sanyasa yoga sanyasa yoga means given up all other pursuits and just yoga just my own self that is my only pursuit so everything else is given up through that what happens shuddha sattva so now actions also i am performing but why am i performing not to gain its result but because it is my duty Why? Why are you doing your duty so that I want to attain myself? Now my goal is clear. I am doing it for self-realization only. And why have you given up other actions for that also for self-realization? No other goal I have. Yatha yah shuddha sattva. That is how the minds also become pure. So I have to also. perform this duties as worship of god which is called as karma yoga and try to purify my mind shuddha sattva te such people te brahma lokeshu paranta kale paramrtah parimuchanti sarve the word meaning is they at the end of their lifetime means at the time of death paranta kale anta kale so at the end of lifetime at at the time of death brahma lokeshu they attain brahma loka etc 
Paramrtaha and they become immortal with this knowledge and Parimuchanti Sarve and totally free from everything. So now this kind of verses often guess, get misinterpreted and without a Guru it is very difficult to get the correct meaning. So Puja Gurudev stresses again and again and of course it is in line with whatever Bhagavan Shankaracharya ji has explained. What is it? It, says, it is not talking about the falling of the body and the person going to a realm called Brahma Loka and staying there. That is also there and that has been already talked about in the beginning itself of the Upanishad that you do Upasanas etc. You can attain Brahma Loka and there Brahma ji himself gives this same knowledge he gives and then you attain liberation there. That is called Krama Mukti. It was talked about in the very beginning. Here what is meant is because it is just culmination of the Upanishad. Why will he talk about Brahma Loka and all these things? This is the highest knowledge. So for a Jnani, what is this? In the seat of meditation. When one has given up all other pursuits, I don't want any other experience, sannyasa yoga. I am not related to anybody, anything, any place, any experience. Because sometimes when we sit for meditation, we want a particular experience. And sometimes we feel, today you know, it was so good, meditation was so good. Why? What happened? And today was this experience of so much of peace was there. So there is an experience that I am looking for. Sometimes it may be very superficial also, sometimes it may be deep also, but experience is an experience. It is something different from me. So I am looking for something. I want this. Today, no, I experienced a lot of joy. That joy was experienced, means different from me. That is no meditation. Our scriptures are very clear about it. Giving up even that expectation of joy or peace. Samyasa. Just intent on attaining the self. Having very clearly understood, this is what it is. In the seat of meditation, when that ego, like that drop of water, comes and touches the surface of the ocean, that moment is the death of the drop of water. This ego, when it comes face to face with this self, when this tiny lamp or the reflection comes face to face with the sun, that reflection ceases to have any independent existence. It is a death of the ego in meditation. Parantakale. It is not the death of the person or the body. It is the death of samsara for that person. And death of samsara means what? The death of the ego which has created this samsara. So death of this samsari. So it is not this deha, this deha tyaga, when this body is dropped, it is antakala, this is parantakala. So that death of the ego at that time, what remains, that self, paramritaha, amrita, that immortal self alone remains which was in the very beginning called as Akshara. Parimuchanti Sarve. Everything is dropped off, is completely liberated. That experience of a Jnani is beyond the scope of our 
senses, mind, intellect. In the intellect, the ego is sitting. And this ego is looking around. And the ego is saying, I know this, I have understood this, I am not able to understand this. What does this exactly mean? Why can't this meaning be right? Ego is sitting and doing all this analysis. That ego. Parantakali. Had that annihilation of the ego. That self is experienced, which is immortal and ever liberated. So, what is needed is that reflection of the sun turning towards the sun. So, as though the reflection has gone and merged into the sun. But in that sunlight, that light of reflection is nothing. So, it ceases to exist as though it was never there as an independent entity. But now, I have stopped associating with the reflection. I have stopped start associated with the self, with the sun, which is here, the consciousness and that consciousness I have to be established. This is the state of supreme realization. And this can come to these people of these kind of adjectives have been used for them. So therefore, purity of mind is necessary, self-application is necessary, giving up of every other pursuit is necessary and to understand and ascertain the real import of the Upanishadic statements is necessary. All this is necessary and that is what will lead us to. So, te Brahma Lokeshu, what is this Brahma Lokeshu? Loka, we have already seen. Loka means Lokyate iti Loka, experience, any realm of experience, anything is that is experienced is called Loka. Brahma Loka, experience of Brahman. Now, how can experience of Brahman take place? It cannot take place as this. It has to take place as I. So, attainment of Brahma Loka in the language of knowledge is self realization. In the language of karma, upasana, etc., it is a realm. And through which there also, after waiting a long time, I get this same knowledge and then I am liberated. Krama Mukti. But here, Brahma Loka does not mean going to another realm and waiting there. Here, Brahma Loka means the direct experience of Brahman as I am that. So, in that experience, the ego is dead. I recognize, I understand, I experience, I abide in the immortal self that I am, liberated from everything else. That is the highest. Level. And here, Brahma Lokeshu, there are different readings in different, different Upanishads. The same mantra comes in other Upanishads also. But here, it is Brahma Lokeshu. This other reading is Brahma Loketu. So, Brahma Loke to Parantakali. <coughs> so, in that experience of Brahman, here when it is said Brahma Loke Shu, it is plural is used. So, that is also explained in uh, Bhagavan Shankaracharya says why plural is used because it seems as though every individual is experiencing that Brahman separately. It seems like that. Therefore, it has these words are used for explaining to an ignorant person. So, from the state of ignorance, we feel there are so many people, so many different experiences. Therefore, all these experiences are different. We feel like that. So, it is like all different people sleeping. Deep sleep experience for everyone is exactly the same. But we say all people are in their own sleep world. 
and they will come back. So this sleep world as though is different, different world, but everybody is attaining, everybody is experiencing the same thing. But even then when we wake up, it feels that we have all come back from some unknown land, which is nothing is common between us. It seems like that. But here in this knowledge, the knowledge is exactly the same. So two jnanis, if they meet, they don't have to talk because they are experiencing the same thing. But still, from our standpoint, seems to be different. Therefore, Brahma Lokeshu is given here. So, Brahma Loketu is also there in other Upanishads. So, Te Brahma Lokeshu Parantakale Paramrataha Parimuchanti Sarve. Then further, further, uh, in the next mantra, again talking about this uh, state of realization only, here it is being said that that state of realization, that liberation, how does it take place? What is what happens? So, we will read the mantra number 7. We will discuss about it tomorrow. <clears throat> Gata kala panchadasha pratishtha. Gata kala panchadasha pratishtha. Devascha sarve prati devata so. Karmani vijnana mayascha atma. <coughs> Pare Vyaye Sarve Ki Bhavanti Pare Vyaye Sarve Ki Bhavanti We'll see this tomorrow oh, for a few minutes. Just. Sit straight. All the limbs, entire body relaxed. Eyes gently closed. Focus your attention on the natural breathing that is taking place. Let the attention be just below the nostrils where the air is entering gently and coming out naturally, peacefully. We observe our breath.
The mind wanders away, bring it back. Observe the breathing. Who is the one observing this breathing? Focus on the observer. Initially, the mind may not cooperate and can go here and there. Patiently and lovingly bring it back. Back to the breathing and to the observer of the breath. Observing the breath, move to the observer of the breath. I am observing that observer also. I know Any other experience, any other thought, anything that comes, we make use of it to shift back to the observer and to know
I am the ultimate observer. Beyond the body, mind and intellect. If the mind wanders, focus the attention on who knows that the mind is wandering. And who knows the observer of the mind. The ultimate observer is not a thought. One who knows the I thought, that's me. Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachi
गच्छते पूर्णस्य पूर्णमादाय पूर्णमेवावशिष्यते ओम शांति 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 हरि ओम श्री गुरुभ्यो नम हरि ओम इस अ